really not doing very well at this today really need this wine hi booktube lynette here and today's video is going to be about all the books that i've managed to finish in the month of january so january was actually a really good month i'm going to go through some stats with you first of all I actually managed to finish seven books this month and that covered 1,826 pages and 16 and three quarter hours listening time as well. Uh, so spoiler, I finished some audiobooks this month. In terms of the format of the books that I read, I finished two print books, I finished three ebooks and two audiobooks. Uh, so that's 29% in print. 42% in ebooks and 29% in audiobooks, um, which is really great to see that I've got audiobooks on my pie charts for this month. A range of genres, um, so they covered mystery, romance, fantasy, and sci fi, and then there was a little sprinkling of contemporary thrown in and um, they also covered a range of age ranges, uh, which isn't covered by the stats, and that is middle grade, YA, and adult. It covered a variety of moods, the main ones being adventurous and mysterious, um, but there was also dark and tense, and then I had reflective and relaxing, um, and lighthearted and challenging thrown in there as well, as well as um, in some of the cases, because I read a couple of uh, romances, they were a little bit emotional too. 42% of the books were slow paced, 29% were medium, and 29% were fast paced. And then I had 40% were 300 pages or less, 40% were three to 500 pages, and 20% were 500 pages or more. Um, as always, uh, the fiction, non-fiction balloon is a fully fiction balloon. It's very rare that I read um, anything uh, non-fiction. And then finally, my star ratings. Um, I had a range of star ratings. So the lowest one being two and a half stars, the highest being four stars. And uh, my average for all seven books came out at 3.32. And this is where I absolutely love Storygraph because um, as you can see in the little chart that I've got up here, um, not only can you give half stars on Storygraph, you can give quarter stars as well, which I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying. Okay, so now we've got the stats portion of this video out of the way, let's talk about the books that I actually did read. The first book was the December pick from 2021. Um, yeah, ran a little bit behind with this one, but uh, we did push back the meeting to the first week of January anyway, uh, just to give us all a bit of time with Christmas and everything going on. So I wasn't the only one that didn't finish it in December. Uh, but the book that we'd picked was I Am Half Sick of Shadows by Alan Bradley. This is book four in the Flavia De Luce uh, detective series. It's a detective series that is geared towards um, middle grade, so the nine plus age range. And it's about Flavia, who is a young girl. Again, she's in that nine to 12 year old age range and she solves mysteries. The mysteries are on the, in the vein of Agatha Christie, which I think I've said before on this channel, they're not really my bag, so this book was a bit of a miss for me. Um, I liked the idea of it, but I was getting frustrated. It was a 300 page book, and by page 100, we still hadn't had the murder that was the whole setup for the story. Um, we were still, Going back over previous books, this was book four in the series, um, and yeah, it just it just didn't work for me. Um, it just took too long to get to the story, and then it was wrapped up. the The whole mystery was wrapped up within a hundred pages, and then we had a whole, you know, we had almost a hundred pages of wrap up after that. So it just, there just wasn't enough of the story for me. There was too much about Flavia herself. Uh, Flavia, I felt, for me, was not quite the character I wanted her to be. In some cases she was a little naive, and in others she was just too precocious, and it just swung too much from one to the other for me, um, that I just couldn't get on board with her character, and I didn't actually like any of the other characters at all. Um, so, 
yeah it, it was a bit of a miss for me um and i've said that i might go back and read another one from the series and give it a second try but the more i reflect on it the less likely that is going to be because like i say i just it's just not those types of mysteries just don't do it for me um and yeah i'm i'm just i just don't think that um it took too long to get into the story there wasn't enough of the story and i just there were times in this because the character of flavia she's uh very much into science um and scientific experiments and there was just too much of that in there for me i felt at some parts of the story that i was back in school in chemistry lessons being taught chemistry all over again and i hated science at school it wasn't my thing i just i just didn't enjoy it at all it just was a complete mess for me um which i was really disappointed because the premise i actually i wanted to like it i wanted to enjoy it so yeah i i'm just not sold on on reading any more um in this series it's it's highly unlikely at this point so the second book that I finished was A Romance and this was claimed by Sarah Fine. It's a dystopian romance, uh, so it's set in a version of the world that we live in. Um, there's been a catastrophe which has pretty much wiped out a lot of agriculture. Uh, but there's also um, these characters who uh, can move between um, the world that we're in and another version of our world which is like a shadow version where our souls go after we've died and they're called fairies and the reason they can move into uh, that part of the world is to help our souls either move on to heaven or hell whichever one we're supposed to be in in this story we're following Declan Ferry um, and we're following him as he's trying to protect uh, a character that we met in the first book because this is book two in a series um and she's called galena now she is a scientist who is trying to um find a cure or a vaccination um for an affliction that has affected the population uh there are people who are out to stop galena because they don't want her to succeed and declan ends up trying to protect her and the only way he can protect her is to marry her um, and take her into the fairy family and that leads to all sorts of angst uh, between them uh, between Galena and Declan's family and uh, between Declan and his family I really enjoyed it I remember I bought this at the point that I finished the first book last year um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it at the time um, however, I felt that the world wasn't quite formed enough for me um, and again, it's one of these where I had to read more of it to get into it better. So I really did enjoy this instalment because you got to see more of the, the, the worlds and you got more of an explanation about how the world worked, about how fairies worked um, and it was just really good fun for me and I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that I actually managed to pick it up. I haven't yet invested it in the third instalment, um, but it's definitely a series that I'm going to keep on my tracker um, of ones that I want to keep up with and uh, read in future. Uh, because Declan and Galena were really great together. I'm looking forward to seeing where their story goes in future books because Galena, in terms of her scientific work, isn't done. Um, so and there's a lot more to come there's some mystery um we know who the villains are but we don't quite know who the villains are in this story and yeah there were some more revelations towards the end of this book which i can't speak about here because it would give it away um but yes i did thoroughly enjoy this this book and this next installment in the series so the third book that i finished this month was sinful cinderella by anita vale and this is, as it sounds, it is a retelling of the Cinderella story. Now I need to give trigger warnings uh, for this book before I talk about it and that is it does deal with domestic abuse, uh, that is parent to child and also spouse to spouse. It also has trigger warnings uh, for attempted rape and discussion of actual rape. Um, 
so if that is something that you're affected by then if you still want to read it then please go in with your eyes open it is only a novella it's only a short book um but the words do have impact and they did have an impact on me it is something that you need to know about before you start reading um again i did enjoy it i enjoyed the dark twist on the fairy tale which is what this is uh cinderella is not a good person uh, she does good things because it does fill some magic for her but ultimately she is looking for revenge on her stepmother and her stepsisters who she feels don't like her and don't have her best interests at heart and honestly they don't Cinderella is determined to go to the prince's ball to catch his eye and to marry him because then she can lord it over her mother and her stepsisters and basically treat them the way they've been treating her. Um, I won't say any more than that um, because it would give it away. Like I say, it's a very short book. Uh, but I did like the fact that actually everything was turned on its head. Cinderella is not a good person. Um, she's, she's, she's quite a modern woman, really, in some ways. Uh, she's not the naive little uh, girl that she's portrayed to be in the Disney fairy tales. Um, and if you like uh, dark, twisted retellings, then I would definitely recommend this series to you. And the fourth book that I finished was the first of my two audiobooks and that was Archangel's Kiss by Nalini Singh. Uh, this is one that I started last year um, trying to get back into audiobooks while I'm traveling to work. Uh, if you've been watching my channel then you know that I'm moving to the next town and that I'm going to have more traveling time and that I want to try and listen to audiobooks while I'm doing it. So I was starting to try to get into audiobooks. Anyway, I've been spending a lot of time at the flat and I've been decorating and I didn't have a TV and uh, putting YouTube on in the background just ate my phone battery all the time, um, as well as data. So I decided that I would try and listen to audiobooks while I was moving around and painting because it was easier. Um, I could put that, put my phone anywhere um, and I didn't need to actually have sight of it. Anyway, Archangel's Kiss is the second book in Nalini Singh's Guild Hunter series. And it's actually um, is following still Raphael and Elena, who are in quite a steamy, hot relationship. Um, and yes, by steamy, uh, the scenes are not safe for work and i was glad i was on my own in the flat when i was listening to them and that the walls are quite thick that my neighbors couldn't hear what i was listening to either so again we're following elena and Raphael, as i say uh we have a new evil character on the scene in this one and that is li juan who is an oriental archangel and covers the the orient part of our world and she has demanded to meet elena um, Raphael's new partner um, and they are very worried that actually Elena is in danger from Li Juan. but there is a, a ball they can't refuse to go as with all these things they can't refuse to go also they're hearing that Li Juan has been creating these zombie-like creatures and they need to investigate that to decide whether Li Juan needs to be killed essentially i think i think you can kill an archangel in this series i'm not too sure um anyway it's all working up towards the ball and obviously there is danger for elena there are people who have gone missing that they need to go searching for which puts elena in danger um and yeah it's all about how Raphael has to keep saving elena's life uh, while she builds friendships with all of his friends it was good it passed away quite a few hours while i was painting um it was enjoyable um and i would definitely enjoy this series and yes um my cat is making an appearance uh yes it, it is a series that i actually did continue because then the fifth book that i finished in the month was archangel's consort 
um, which is book three in the series. And again, we're still following Elena and Raphael. This time, um, they have had word or evidence that a ancient archangel who has been dormant asleep for years is waking up and they suspect that the archangel is actually Raphael's mother again the whole series they they don't know whether Raphael's mother because she was bordering on madness when she went to sleep the sleep can actually help archangels come back to themselves and um heal the madness for want of a better term because you can't heal madness um yeah i there wasn't a lot more development um in this book than there had been in the previous two again it was elena got in trouble Raphael saved her or someone else saved her although elena is starting to be able to save herself more and they are becoming more of a partnership in that um and again it whirled away quite a lot of hours while i was in the flat i think it was about um eight or nine hours worth of audiobook Again, I enjoyed it. I was glad that I wasn't listening to it anywhere I could be overheard because, again, there were some quite steamy, not safe for uh, other listening ears um, around. And I have actually looked to see if I can get book four in the series. Um, unfortunately, there's only one copy in my library service and that is not in a library that is able to ship them out. So I'm not able to get a library copy. And I don't really want to fork out for the book itself um, in ebook format and audiobook is just too expensive, um, even though I would actually really like to continue listening to them. Um, so I probably will continue the series at some point, but it's not going to be any time in the near future. I have too many other books on my TBR that I need to get read. The sixth book that I finished, I was back to the ebooks, and this book was Blacklist by Geneva Lee. Geneva Lee is an author that I read quite a few years ago, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed the work, um, but I never really branched out into anything else that she was writing. Um, but I saw this advertised on Facebook. It was free. I was in the mood for romance when I downloaded it. Um, so yeah I just I picked it up and went with it. It's about um, two a young couple Sterling and Adair. Sterling is a poor boy from the wrong side of the tracks and Adair is a rich girl who is expected to marry within the social circle um, to keep the connections that the family has going. Um, but they meet when they're at college. Sterling doesn't really fit in with the crowd that Adair runs with. He doesn't like them. Um, he finds that there are questionable behaviours. Um, and again, trigger warning for discussion of rape and date rape. Um, and characters being drugged. Uh, so if that's not your sort of thing and you don't like the darker side of romance, then probably this book isn't for you um and Adair is trying to get out she wants out of the situation that she's in she wants out of her family she's not happy there she doesn't want to do what's expected of her um and she actually doesn't particularly like the people she hangs out with either um uh, it's dual timeline like I say so we're also come back to these characters five years in the future I think um maybe a bit longer anyway sterling by this time um has made his fortune and um adair's family have hit on some hard times and sterling is um trying to get his revenge for something that happened when they were young um and he's particularly trying to get revenge on adair we don't really know why and by the end of the book you don't really know what is going on you don't know why sterling wants revenge and also Adair has a secret that she keeps alluding to all the way through the story um, that you don't know what that is either. I have an idea. Um, I don't know that I actually enjoyed it. I did and I didn't. I feel strangely compelled to carry on with the series. Um, and I did actually buy the next book. Uh, it just didn't fit with any of the prompts for February. So I'm not picking it up for February at the moment. Um but yeah, I just, I don't know what it was. I can't put my finger on it, but there was something about the story 
that just kept me reading and made me want to continue reading when I'd put it when I'd finished this installment so yeah so probably look out for the next book coming up in a future TBR and the final book that I finished in January was our book club pick for the month and that book is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey uh, this is a science fiction dystopian and it's set way in the future when humans have basically um, moved into space. We've colonised Mars and other planets and we have also uh, built space stations. This story follows James Holden, Jim, who is the executive officer on a spaceship, which while he's off on a separate mission with a handful of crew, it, the main ship gets destroyed. He broadcasts across space what has happened and unwittingly starts a war because he sets one faction of humanity against another. Um, we're also following a detective on one of the space stations, Detective Miller, and he's been asked to look for a girl who has links to the ship that destroyed Holden's. So eventually their story comes together. Um, and they're following how the war is escalating, how their actions are escalating the war. Um, and yeah, it has all the elements of a good book. Again, like the first uh, book I read, has all the elements of a good book. I just can't put my finger on why I didn't enjoy it. And I didn't enjoy it. I have reserved Caliban's War with the library. I'm going to give it a go just to see whether continuation of the series gets any better. But wasn't a great start for me. Definitely didn't feel compelled to keep reading. I just, I want to know what happens next. Um, but I don't want to know what happens next. I'm not bothered about what happens next. And like I say, I just can't put my finger on it. But there was just something about this that I just didn't enjoy. And yeah, I mean, as a result, very few of us finished it. Um, so we ended up not having the meeting as well. Um, it was that, but it wasn't a great pick for all of us this month. Um, so yeah, so that didn't end January very well for me. And it's left me feeling a little bit, yeah, I was, I was a bit needy at the beginning of this month, at the beginning of February. Um, so yeah, hmm, not not really sure what else I can say about this. Uh, left me in a bit of a slump. So those were all the books that I managed to finish in January. Um, it wasn't a bad reading month. I know I said that I finished in a bit of a slump, but it's a slump that I've been able to get myself out of reasonably okay um, during the first week or so of February. Um, but it was a bit mixed, um, so I had some really good, and I had some okay, and I had some, yeah, not that good for me books. Um, how did your reading month go? Please let me know in the comments box. I love to hear from you there. I'd love to chat with you all there. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a like. And if you haven't already, then please uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll leave a button here for you to do it. I make videos every week and they go up Mondays at 6.30pm UK time and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye!